Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, who are you? My name is Mia. I'm 16 years old and I play handball for Flint. Yes, and my name is uh, Selina. Uh, I'm 18 years old and I'm playing also handball for Flint. Yep, I'm Mari. I'm 22 and I also play for Flint. So, uh, the half of the team of Flint is here. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we right now? Uh, we are uh, in the uh, Flint uh, Hall. A mm. meeting room. A yeah. meeting room, yeah. <laughs> Where is it here, Transberg? Is yeah. it Transberg? Or yeah, is it Transberg. It's uh, like on the coast, so it's mm. not in the center. Mm. But it's five minutes to the center, so it's not far out. Mm. Mia, why did you play him? or what is your motivation? Uh, first of all, I love to train and I really enjoy playing handball. Also, my whole family has played handball, so it was quite natural for me. So you got a got a huge background from your family. Yeah. Is it a little bit of pressure? No, not at all. No. It's intrinsic motivation from yourself. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And Siri, when when did you start playing handball and why? Uh, yeah, I started to play handball when I was six years old. Uh, and I started for the yeah, just when I started to play. Yeah, I got my hand when I was little. I also play in handball since I began in school, like five, six years. Um, my mom was a handball player too, so I've always been in the hall and playing handball. So, yeah, it was very natural for me. Yeah. Is it uh, normal that you're, every one of you starts really young? Is it normal that? Every handball player here in Norway starts at, at six or at eight. Or did you have uh, maybe some teammates which come when they are twelve or thirty? How is this? Mm, yeah, I, the goalkeeper we have, like Elena, she started when she was like 11, 12, and that's like late. Okay. I don't know many girls who started that late. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't your, yeah. Why did you think is that uh, common here? Norway. Mm, I don't know, but I think it's a lot about uh, the culture building and for, from when you're young it's well you're learning a lot in the younger years so I think that's an important step in the career. Mm. Did you practice another sport when you were younger? Uh, I uh, have done track and field. Track and field? Mm -hmm. What is track and field? Athletics. Ah, athletics, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I've uh, been playing handball, uh, yeah. Just yeah, just have, I was in athletics, but I like jumping. <laughs> okay, and that maybe helps you for your career as an animal player, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, perfect. Um, how was your... You're not from Flint. Oh, so you came here to Flint to play in the, the Rima Thusen League, so mm -hmm. the highest uh, league. Um, how many stations were between your starting point and Flint? So how many clubs? I've played in two clubs, uh, Grana Arndal and uh, Flint. Mm. Mm. I've also played in two clubs, uh, Sandefjord and Halsen. Yeah. Mm. Okay, how much time now? Uh, <laughs> okay, I've been in Jøvik, where it's like yeah, inside the country, uh, my whole junior career. And then I, when I was 17, I went one year to Storhammar, mm. and then one year back uh, in Jøvik. And then I had two years in Larvik, and they, they got the <laughs> bankrupt, or the economics was uh, very bad, and then I got here to Flint. Okay, um, is it... One short question, how many players from the Flint, from your, your team right now, are from Flint? From, from the beginning rowings or from the town? What do you think? So maybe like two, three, uh, yes. something like that. Yeah, okay. the, the younger girls today are more, mm -hmm. uh, but of the older is maybe two. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, in uh, my my experience in Norway is that you have a huge league system with uh, the, the clubs are not very far away. Maybe Stormer is in the middle mm. of Norway, something like that. So yeah. this is a little bit far much more far away. 
how is it um, to change a club for you? Was it was it easy? Was it um, was it did you a little bit nervous about it? How, how was your feeling about changing the club? So how is it to come from one Norwegian club to another? Um, in Norway, it's, um, it's easy to change the club, but uh, it's more about the economics, I think, because there's not many clubs where you can play prof professional. So it depends on school and jobs. Uh, most of the changes in clubs is maybe like three clubs or something. Then you play. The players are all professionals. Then. Mm -hmm. So it's. I think it's most that it depends on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And when did you did you all go to a specific handball school? Mm. So like like Wang. Yes, go. we were yes. both to go. We go to Wang. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did not. No, you, you have uh, just a, a normal school. Yeah, but so, I had so like. So no handball. Yeah, uh, well, I had handball because you can choose that as a course, okay. but I, not like one. They're like mm. specified. Mm. So mm. they maybe practice two times a week, and you practice just one week for half a year for this course. Oh. Yeah, no, I had handball uh, or one handball and one physical training in school two times, and I also had like gym beside, mm. but not like uh, them. Okay. They're like every day, I think. Yes. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Okay, that's a lot. This is the next question. Uh, how was uh, how was the practice times changed in your years? So how often did you practice when you were uh, when you're ten, when you're fifteen, or when you're twenty? How did these things change? Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. I have um, seen a lot of change there because when I was young and I played in the beginning of the national team, like there now yeah. we had like two handball practice every day like for a week and it was very much handball all the time and two hours and running and stuff but now we almost never have two handball practice a day we have one physical and one handball so that's a big change since i was uh, like 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. you too uh, we yeah <laughs> yes uh, we're having one uh, physical and, uh, and one handball uh, each uh, day yeah. each day and that, now you're playing here at this uh, senior level team and now you have just these typical normal practices with with Zarko with this team mm. uh, did you play also in the in the school or is it yeah uh, yeah we also play handball at school yeah so so you have combined. This practice, your senior mm. level practice with the school practice, but you have only, only flint yeah. practice right now. Yeah, so I do all the physicals myself, mm. so I don't have as much handle as, as they have. I just have the four practice or five practice mm. with the team. Okay, how was your, um, so what, what, uh, what is your motivation or what is your goal right now with your career? You're right now here in flint, it's the highest league in, uh, in Norway. What is your specific goal for handball? So where did you see yourself in, at the end of your career? Uh, I think I want to become as good as I can. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that is very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to develop as a, a handball athlete and just have fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I agree. <laughs> uh, I also want to be as good as I can be. And uh, hopefully that's uh, uh, driving me uh, long in the handball. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, it's all about having fun. But I play in the Champions League, and that was that spectacular. It's so much fun to meet uh, other cultures and teams. So I want to do that again. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, did you? This is a, it's, it's a total uh, difference between. The, Norwegian players and German, German yeah. players, uh, players from Germany. I think when you ask a German player, he say one number, so I'd like to play Bundesliga first top three or mm. second Bundesliga. So did you have your head a specific, you say Champions League, mm. you would like to play a Champions League also, and I think national, um, the highest national team also, maybe A level, when you're going to reach? Yeah, I think like the national team is more of a bonus for me. Mm. I don't think that's my... I will still be a happy humble player if I don't make it to the national team. So it's not my main goal. It's just some bonus, and m my main goal is to play on a good team when I have fun, like every day. That's mm -hmm. the most important to me in humble to enjoy where I'm staying. Mm -hmm. 
I agree with Mari because you spend most of your time in your club and the national team is just it's a nice bonus but it's not where you are all the time. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and I also want to play Champions League. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Me there's, too. <laughs> there's, a, there's a big goal. There's a big goal. <laughs> but I, I hear that um, this is also one, one thing I learned here in Norway. It's the Jante Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that you don't say, yeah, my players here are good, but I'd like to go on the next step. Mm -hmm. did, did you have this feeling? Did you... Did you um, slow down sometime when you when you imagine nation your goals or where you want to be? Is it easy to understand? Yeah, I understand. I think uh, yeah, it's kind of that culture, but also it's a player to go out and say I want to be the best in the world. So I think it's about what goals you have and yeah, also of course it's about personality so as well. But yeah, I understand your question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm honest, but are you honest? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, perfect. One uh, one question back to to the to the uh, school, or maybe there are also uh, region selections. Mm. Yeah. When did that start? Uh, that you that you have your first like a tryout that mm. you were in your home club, and then you have to go to school. How was it? To go to one, how was it to apply for them? Um, you apply with your characters from. from you you. Um, yeah, the school before one. Yeah. <laughs> Junior school. I don't yeah. know what it is in English. Okay. Yeah. From so then. Higher, yeah. yeah. And, and then they look at your sport performances, but it's not like um, a trial. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a test, they just okay. uh, search you up yes, and, and look at you, and and look at you. Yeah. maybe so look at some of your matches or yeah. something. And so they pick you from your sports result in your club, but yeah, they yeah. don't yeah. invite 30 players, no. two no. days and then... Okay. But we have like the regional teams, mm -hmm. so that's the, the first trial. Yeah, this is... Yeah, uh, when we're like, yeah, I think 13, 14, we have the regional teams and it's... Seven different areas in the Norway, so everyone has uh, seven, seven, I yeah. think, or six now maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, yeah. And then every team gets you get on this um, um, training together, and they pick out the best ones, and then you play for like I played for the inside the country team, and they played for like the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, we won, you know. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's like the first tryout to go to. So yeah, that was really big and yeah. How was it? So what was your what were what was the steps? Um first we had that just the coach came to our practice and just watched us. And then we get uh, like called in to uh, practice together when thirty people, so it was a lot of people. And then he selected down maybe 23 or something and then they practice uh, somehow uh, um, to the contest and then just before the contest he picked out like the 17 people he wants mm -hmm. Mm. and how is the the structure did you see that one region is every year better than the others yeah actually like oslo has mm. definitely the most winnings uh, yes. in my <laughs> inside the country we were the first team to ever win yeah. So yeah, we're never we're always losing. So we were the first one. Yeah. In Oslo, they have a lot of players yeah. too. Yeah, and it's like Wang Oslo mm -hmm. is a very um, attractive school. So a lot of people move from all around the country there. And so mm -hmm. when the regional team is taken out, they're playing on Oslo. Mm -hmm. So often they have like a lot of uh, national team players and people from other places, but they play for Oslo. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about your. Um, your education, your work with the coaches. Mm -hmm. When you, uh, so Zako is from is from Serbia, from the Balkans. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Can you see any differences between Zako, a, a coach from abroad, to your typical or to your home club coach? So what is what do you think are the main parts or the main goodies for a Norwegian coach? I think the Norwegian 
co- uh, coach, ja. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe more. Um, he's like just running and give it all, and I don't give a shit. She can be like that <laughs> sometimes. But the region coaches are more like thinking and just. Um, I know he's more. I think it's more about just giving it all. If that means anything to you. Yeah, okay. Comes yeah, but action. I think that Norwegian coaches I've been have been more thinking and maybe they're like um more um okay with giving us a seat for a seat. Yeah, uh yeah, yeah, okay. Uh when I had like I had like Tudor Larmoon, who's one of the best uh, coaches in Norway, I would say. Yeah. And he was like super calm all the time. And very much thinking and then stopping and using a long time to tell things. But Sarko is like, no, stop, run, no, no, Mari, shoot, <laughs> bang, bang, tak. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like very direct and, you know, can be like a, 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 on impulse. So that's a big difference. But I think the most important thing is actually how, uh, how the coaches are as a person. You know, if the coaches can be social and talk with the outside, I don't think... Uh, it marries if it's a bit hard, then it's no problem if you have a good communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you see any differences? Mm, uh, I agree with what Mari said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I, I would uh, agree with that also because when I, when I came here to Norway and I see different cultures, I see mm. this calm thinking yeah. thing, um, but also these not impulsive and not very loud. Mm. and not very often interrupting so so they let the flow because this is also one specific game culture for you that you have this really good fast break collective way and, mm. and everyone is running um what do you think are some potentials of the norwegian coaches so what did you can you can you imagine one thing um one thing where you see potentials and what do, do you mean? What's better in a Norwegian what coach? No, no, where where they can be developed. Where they more. can be. So what what uh, what is? Uh, oh yeah, okay. Hmm? Yeah, I think uh, maybe they're a little bit <laughs> that Janteloven. They're yeah. a little bit afraid to tell what they mean, and then they try to like avoid it or bake it in something instead of just saying it direct. Mm-hmm. And I as a player like to just hear that you can't shoot or just. No, well, maybe you're not. No, no, no. It's not. So I think that's something the Norwegians can learn from. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's not really one specific uh, answer to what a coach should be, mm. but uh, they all have their positive and negative aspects. Of course, they yes. <laughs> um, did you think that you train um, often enough the one? Against one situation. Mm. I don't know. Where that's we don't use that as so much. But also, I think it's like when you play a game, mm. you for me as a player, I don't like take the ball with me and do one as one. I never do that. So when I do one on one, is after the the play, then the defense are in movement. Mm. So I think it's a little bit unnatural to stand like just one on one. Against, but of course it's good practice and to do it uh, sometimes, but I don't like, think it's that relevant. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe, mm-hmm. maybe in your maybe in your, in your school times so or maybe when you're, when you're younger, mm-hmm. um, what do you think were the most topics you practice? Uh, the most important or what you we know, did the most? The most, most? most uh, common things. So what were really often uh, topic yeah. you practice? Shooting, yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, we did a lot of uh, ball movement and running with the ball. Mm. Yes, we did a lot of that. That was we when we were. I was lucky to have had the best team when I was younger, and we had a uh, so high uh, ball speed and running the yeah. So that was a very important to my team to play the fast balls and be good with the ball from when they're young because the other do fools and you can just yeah, didn't do that and run over them. Mm, we also had a lot of focus on speed in the ball and run while we throw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. And uh, maybe outnumbered situation, so over tall. 
situations. Yeah, we also had that to build like self confidence and to yeah see the where you should go for the decision tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one last topic. Um, it's about the equality of boys and men. So oh, boys and men. <laughs> <laughs> Women and men. Yeah. Um, because when we look back in the history, we see this huge Norwegian women's national team and the, the, the Lavik and Kristiansand right now, which are on our top level and also mm -hmm. right now the Fixtino was also um, choosing as the best player of the world. Mm -hmm. And right now the men team is growing also. Mm -hmm. um, would you think that, uh, that there are any differences between uh, being, a, being a boy or being a girl into a handball club? Mm -hmm. With the opportunities, yeah. with the coaches, with the facilities? Uh, uh, now it's most the same. Maybe even the boys are passing girls because after the national team has been succeeded, it's a lot of interest for the men's handball. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just going like that, the men's handball. So, but that's also very fun because it's the whole interest is uh, rising. Mm -hmm. So before the men's handball didn't do as well and it wasn't like maybe not the personalities and culture, they didn't get much media, but now it's a lot of them in the media all the time. And then like, um, yeah, more out, uh, you watching, um, more at the outside what they're doing and yeah, there's a lot of more interest around the players. Mm. Mm. So you don't have the feeling that every, everything is inequality when you're younger, that the boys have better coaches maybe, or that you say uh, something like that? I think it's pretty similar actually, mm -hmm. and that's very nice, because if you compare to football, the yeah. differences yes. are really big. Yeah. Yeah, can, can you give us an example? Yeah, in, like in Norway. Yeah, that you. I don't think you have any. Maybe like some two or three girls that are professional, like yeah, really professional football players. And the boys, you can see players in second division in Norway. Like it's shared league. <laughs> so, and they're professionals in second division. And the girls are not professionals in the top league. So also the money, of course, they is the most thing. And then they don't and the get facilities. the best. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And they don't get the best trainers if the clubs don't have money. So, yeah. how, how is it in handball right now? We are here in Arema of Intuition League. Yeah. I could imagine that I hear that uh, in Norway it's really rare that someone is a really professional handball player. So, what do you think are the salary, well, not the salary average, but the, compared to the Arema of Intuition League in men's? Do you think it's the same? Yeah, I think it's yeah. almost the same. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's and it's very different because that's a tough thing because it's very different. Maybe a team in first division who I know is in the bottom first division girls have like a lot of money and players turning a lot, but then you have like us or Fana in the top division who don't have much money and the people are paying here to go to school or to job. So yeah, it's uh, actually a lot of varieties that yeah. Okay, can you imagine uh, to play handball when you're still? Here maybe in this in this club, and maybe you're 28 or 29, 20, uh, 30, but and to um, in a combination with a job, could you imagine that? Because uh, in Norway you often need a job uh, next to the handball career, because you don't earn that much money by playing in a Norwegian club. So I think it's a good chance that will happen. Mm. And then would you stay in these uh, two kinds or would you say okay I earn much more on the job and I spend so much time on playing handball that it's for me not even more possible to play handball because I need to live and I need to grow and develop uh, in my job. Yeah a lot of players are quitting maybe after 25 in Norway mm -hmm. so it's a very few players over 25 who play handball in Norway if they're not professionals. So yeah, a lot of people do that. But also, you know, we, uh, a lot of clubs like Flint, we have practices after work every day. So it's possible to combine. It is, but it's... Maybe you take a choice if you want to have more free time after job or something. So it's... I would say the Norwegian league is a very young league with the good players. Mm. Yeah, it is a very young league. But the top... The teams like Molde, Storhammar and uh, Vipers have the 
older girls and the mo most money. Yeah, they have. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, when we say that uh, Norway is a dumb league, mm. could you imagine to go abroad? Yeah. Uh, I think that would be a fun experience, but I think time will show. <laughs> <laughs> but is it evil? Could you? Are you open for it? Maybe when oh, we okay. are on, on Bundesliga yeah. club in Berlin, or maybe. Yeah. German, yeah, German every time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I think I think that would be very fun and uh, a challenge because mm. it's challenging moving to another country. But I think personally, I would develop as a handball player. Mm. Yes, I agree. Uh, and I, um, my goal is to, to play Champions League and maybe take the step. Uh, uh, to another country, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think. Um, and what are your your goals? So which which country are you interested? In? Germany maybe, Denmark. Maybe Denmark. I yeah. I love the French handball, so yeah. I really want to go to play in France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And when do you think uh, would the time come, or well, when when you say this is the perfect time to go abroad? Mm -hmm. When uh, where it? Um, I think m most uh, are waiting at least uh, to when they finish the national, younger national team level. Mm -hmm. It's 21, 23? Yeah, 20, 20, 20, yeah. I think. Yeah. 20? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and also some wait until they finish with their studies. Um, but it's very, it's, it's, yeah, it's very different, so. But, it, yeah. Mm. Ah, yeah. <laughs> um, did you play against other national, you play against other national teams? And, and you also? Um, I well, haven't. Not yet? We haven't no, played. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> um, how was that experience and can you describe how you maybe succeed with your Norwegian handball style? So in which things are you better than other teams? And where can you see potentials? Because right now you play, I think you play against Hungary, in, in Hungary, or was it? Yeah, uh, against Hungary. Yeah. yeah, and I think, what was your experience with that, and which differences did you see? Uh, no, so, yeah. uh, no, I think, uh, uh, actually, the Norwegian when team when I was younger, I think we actually had a lot of more focus on the individual players. I think that when we played against Hungary, they were so good to move the ball and be a collective team. And we weren't that good at, I think we were more individually. But also I think uh, Norwegian have very good defense and I feel like they are more fo focused on that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a part when we're better. But I think we're, we're not so collective as I would wish. I think more maybe Denmark and Hungary are more collective than the Norwegian team actually. But when we played uh, with our um, my senior team, like Larvik, when I played uh, the Champions League, I felt like we had more speed than uh, the best team. Yeah, they were good, but when we made like the not all on the top. We have a more speed and defense, definitely definitely defense better, yeah. Perfect. Is yeah. there at the end is there any history or not history, is there any um, one one story from your background you'd like to share um, about the what is typical in your Norwegian life when you go to practice or what you see for me when I First came. Uh you think that's a very really important when you build a team to have a mm. really great culture and that like small things like that, or maybe you know play football and sometimes it's get a start when you're socializing. Yeah, uh, it's a about culture building. I think and I, I think that's very really important. Yeah, yeah I agree. Mm. Perfect. And one last question: Could you imagine that one coach is? is uh, it's much more on a, on a Balkan style, much louder and much more aggressive to you. Maybe like Zarko, but Zarko is mm. compared to other Balkan countries yeah. really loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Um, what did you think would be the uh, reject reaction from the team? Uh, 
Uh, so you say you can work with that. Yeah, yeah. I, you like the direct way. Yeah, but also I also like, like it. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, we are girls and uh, <laughs> yeah. it comes uh, many... It depends. Yeah. 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 I think it really depends on your personality. Yeah. yeah. But I I like Sarko. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> I have, I, you know, I know Luigi Coles is much worse. <laughs> I'm much more angry than Sarko, so <laughs> I think as long as he he's good to communicate with you after practice. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. but I totally. So. Perfect. Tusen tack for your time. Hej då. Hej då.